Pete Buttigieg is a presidential candidate with a tongue twister of a name. He's from South Bend, Indiana, which is where John Dickerson of CBS This Morning went to meet the mayor. So uh, we're close to downtown. The hospital where I was born is right across the river there. Uh, this is the Pete Buttigieg wants to be president, a task almost as difficult as pronouncing his name. It's Buttigieg, as in boot edge edge. But the 37-year-old mayor of South Bend, Indiana, and veteran of Afghanistan likes a tough project. But it needed a ton of repair. In the right market. The house, it was vacant, and it was, uh, the price was dropping a few thousand bucks every uh, few weeks. And I realized it might actually dip to where I could afford it. Mayor Buttigieg lives in this 1905 home with his husband, Chaston. Now he has his eyes on a different White House. I am a proud son of South Bend, Indiana, and I am running for president of the United States. Once a long shot, All right, go. the mayor of Indiana's fourth largest city has been rising in the polls, attracting contributions and attention. Thank you. I am honored. Like, you're amazing. If elected, he says his top priority would be fixing the democratic system, from the electoral college to gerrymandering. Hey, let's talk about what might be the great security issue of our time, climate change. Otherwise, he believes progress on climate change and health care would be difficult. But what most people see in Pete Buttigieg is the man who would become America's youngest president. Do you think because Donald Trump has opened the window of possibilities that you actually benefit in what's possible in a candidacy and a presidency? In some ways. I mean, I never thought as a 37-year-old mayor that I would be able to say that I have more government experience than the president of the United States. What other part of your life would you point people to who might be concerned, given your age, who might say, well, has he been tested? Well, I remember one moment in Afghanistan when uh, I was responsible for uh, making sure that a vehicle that, that I was driving got to where it was going safely. And you're warned that, uh, for example, a magnetic IED could be placed on your vehicle. And once it sounded to me as though somebody had attached something to the vehicle I was driving. Uh, and uh, for a split second, uh, we had to figure out whether to uh, ditch the vehicle, which would have been uh, obviously very risky as well because you're very obviously a target in the middle of a city where some people are uh, pretty eager to attack you if they got the chance. It turned out what had happened was that there was a beggar who had uh, no legs. He was on a sort of a dolly and he had slapped the side of the car in order to move himself along. Uh, if nothing else, it, it taught me not to uh, overreact and not to panic uh, when something's coming along that's pretty alarming. Buttigieg is a trained pianist. He's also a Rhodes Scholar from Harvard and has studied the rise of another Democrat. A new frontier is here, whether we seek it or not. Also from Harvard, also a veteran, and also once considered too young for office. If you look at his old campaign poster when he's running for Congress, it's this scrawny, toothy young guy, and the slogan is, the new generation offers a leader. Truman came out and said, Senator Kennedy, I'm sure you're going to have a great future, but now is not your time. May I urge you to be patient. Yeah, you're always, when you're young, you're always patted on the head and told that you're the future. But I'm interested in what you can bring to the present. And the, the, the present has always been shaped in some measure by young people. Elected mayor of South Bend at age 29, Buttigieg took over just after Newsweek declared his hometown one of America's dying cities. Big news, big news, big news to the baker. Its golden age was more than 50 years ago as home to the car maker, Studebaker. More than 20,000 strong, these men and women make up the Studebaker family. But in the early 1960s, Studebaker shut down. Those were all shattered old school factory style windows. And took much of South Bend's economy along with it. This place was really hopping until it all came crashing to a halt. Part of the old factory is now a tech center. We've got a code school for teenagers run out of this side. Buttigieg calls it a symbol for what's happened in South Bend under his leadership and what he'd do for the country as president. America deserves our optimism, deserves our courage, and deserves our hope. You've talked about improving the symbolism of the presidency. Why is that important? 
Because the, the presidency is also a moral office, it calls this nation to its highest values. And it sets the tone for the story that we tell ourselves. Narrative is a very powerful thing. And we need to make sure that everybody in America understands where they fit in this country's story. But until recently, the mayor's own story was only half told. When you went to serve, you wrote a letter in case you didn't come back. What's in the letter? I wanted people who cared about me to know that I wouldn't have felt that I'd been cheated, as tragic as it would be if, if my life were cut short, that it was so full that, that I wouldn't have left it with a, with a sense of, of, of anger. But it's a strange thing to think about, too, because uh, I didn't come out until after I came back. I also packed my bags for Afghanistan, having no idea what it was like to be in love. And uh, the, the richest and fullest part of my life uh, is what happened after I came back and, and met Chaston and got married. So, so thank God I came back. Buttigieg came out publicly during his re-election bid in 2015. Last year, he married junior high teacher Chaston Glesman. I, I'm so happy the buddy is here. <laughs> Their two rescue dogs, Truman and One-Eyed Buddy, have their own social media following. It was Buddy who interrupted our interview. Oh, this is like <laughs> politics. This is like the trail. You, you think you're doing a great job, and then someone comes from the left and uh, interrupts everything. Um, or the right. Is that, 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 that. <laughs> Welcome to politics. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the kind of marriage voters have seen before in a presidential campaign, and raises the question, is the country ready for a gay president? Do you feel that your marriage is campaigning as well because uh, you are doing something that is new in American politics? I think I'd argue I don't have to answer for it. Um, I mean, we passed marriage equality. I don't think I have to answer for my marriage anymore. I think how could I possibly be doing this if it weren't for Chaston, if I didn't have someone uh, in my life who just cares about me as me? The messenger is the message. The youngest candidate is promising generational change, with a campaign built on reanimating his party's values for a new era, including a connection with faith. Do you have a particular passage from scripture that you're particularly fond of? If, if there's one that I always try to uh, think about when I'm deciding what to do, uh, it's the Beatitudes. I also think about the scripture that says that when you pray, be not like the hypocrites who love standing in the synagogues and the corners of the streets that they'll be seen by others and praised for it. So, uh, you know, there's a lot to turn to and a lot to check yourself in Scripture. And there may be a lot to check the political rise of Pete Buttigieg. But for those who have trouble with his name, he says, call me Mayor Pete.